My name is Mario. I'm the CFO at Singularity Net and co-founder at Singularity DAO and uh, all-around strategic advisor for the Singularity Net ecosystem companies. So, I mean, Singularity Net is carrying a very strong uh, message, uh, the decentralized benevolent AI. The founder, Ben Goertzel, is one of the earliest scientists and researchers in the realm of artificial general intelligence. And we're also the company that carries Sophia's message around the world. Sophia, the humanoid robot, was the first humanoid robot in the world, and uh, she's a citizen of KSA and one of the biggest brands uh, in the world of robotics and crypto. Personally, I'm the business guy. I manage uh, token treasuries. I help uh, companies get off the ground and all te you know, tech founders to accelerate into success from a token perspective, from an equity perspective as well. And what, what is your role with, uh, with uh, Viaverse and Singularity all this? So as I was saying, I'm a CFO of Singularity Net. So Singularity Net is the mothership AGIX token uh, launched in 2017. Uh, it has become an incubator of AI driven industry focused companies of which singularity dao uh, was the first spin-off and singularity dao has become the crypto hub of the whole ecosystem and so we really help taking founders ideas so sophia in this case and help them build the companies structure the go-to-market strategy launch the tokens and then help them scale from startup to scale up and uh, uh, expand their market uh, penetration and how did you uh, kind of get your foot started in the door into this niche or market? Yeah, so I, I have a, a background in investment banking. So I spent almost 10 years in London, in large American banks, uh, European banks. And uh, it's really empowering, especially at the beginning. You're very young, you do big deals. Uh, you're in trading floor with thousands of people and you see the economy moving. I'm a curious person, so I really enjoyed that. But after a while, it gets very political. You want to try to get to do to do things better, improve, make things more make things for more efficient. And there's an establishment that doesn't allow you to do that. So after seven, eight years, I started looking around, trying to push internally for new things to happen, for efficiencies to happen, for people to share, and that wasn't happening. So I started looking outside of the banking system, and I was in London. So in London, there's a very active. Uh, tech community and startup community and I started connecting. I discovered Ethereum and I was like, oh, but so then something better already exists. Uh, and, uh, you know, smart contracts, programmable money uh, made me click because I was doing that. And so immediately click into, so I can do this, I can do that. And I started carrying the message, seeing how I was picking up. I launched a community in London and then I was lucky enough to invest quite early. So. At the end of 2017, I just decided to, to quit and, uh, and launch this community and then I started helping project raising funds and launching tokens. So why are you passionate about what you do and where does that come from? I'm a guy that likes to build things uh, and likes to see the future as well. So when I, when I met Singularity Net, Ben, uh, you just fall in love with it because it, 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 very, it very much carries a very strong and super relevant message. Now, with the, with the advent of AI this year and the you know, LLMs and ChatGPT, now people are realizing what's going on, but he knew before. And I could understand and relate and marry that message. And I, when, I, when, he, when he offered me the CFO position, I just said, look, Ben, I'm here to make your vision come true. Uh, I understand what you're saying, I can, I can marry it, uh, but I'm a guy that lives in the real world and I build things. So you keep doing your thing, I will follow your vision and I will help you build it. In, in your eyes, where do you see the current landscape of uh, the market today and where do you see it go? So it's been interesting here at Token 2049. Uh, obviously, we've been, I've been on the road since seven years. Uh, the landscape keeps changing, not many survive. Uh, so here this year, it's almost a little bit like back to the future. Uh, 2021, 2022, beginning of 22, at the peak of the bull market, there was a lot of new activity, new projects, uh, uh, but you never know who's who. Uh, so here, it's been, this is a, it's been a great event and you can see that the OGs are here. So. Um, the composition of the ecosystem has consolidated a little bit uh, and only real builders are, are actually still here. The market is complex, uh, it keeps evolving, 
but um, again, consolidation, so a few players are here to stay and you know who they are. Uh, for new projects it's a bit tougher, obviously if, for, uh, we've, done, we've done very well this year, uh, but we're a bit of, a, of an exception. Um, in terms of what's there for the future, I think once again back to the future. We a lot of promises in 2017, a lot of promises in 2021. Now a lot of them were washed out and you know discontinued or moved to something else. Uh, but the promises are still those. Infrastructure, mass adoption, scalability, uh, transparency, and, uh, and now only the ones that really believe in it are thriving. And uh, I think we're still building the core and the, um, the base layer of this. Uh, and, uh, and I see this as a main trend. Obviously we have some newer technology, ZKs, uh, um, liquid staking, uh, gaming the cross you know the cross section between gaming and blockchain uh, are major topics that are going to bring more adoption more usability um, but it's uh, it, it, it's about that so um, for somebody that has been here for a while it may not sound exciting but it is exciting because it's becoming real tell me about uh, the team mission and uh, the culture that you're looking to create yeah so First of all, the culture at Singularity is beautiful and uh, Ben's message and the wider Singularity message really trickles down into the culture of the company and the ecosystem. So it's really empowering and refreshing because by definition you can come in and contribute what you think, uh, you will be heard, you will be considered and sometimes it becomes reality. So from a brainstorming idea to reality, again, it's, there's not many places in the world like this. Sophia is in partnership also with Hanson Robotics. David Hanson was also co-founder of Singularity Net. And uh, it's really, it really keeps true to this. Uh, there's the little bit extra flavor of Sophia herself. So Sophia, as I was saying, is a very strong, very strong brand. And again, with the advent of uh, open AI and so on, you have that unsettling feeling of the matrix happening. Uh, and Sophia instead carries the opposite message. The centralized AI with a relatable face. She's nice, she talks to you, you can relate to her. And, uh, and so you're taking the singularity message and you know, the future into self-conscious machines with, uh, with a relatable face that interacts with you, learns from you, you can learn from her. Um, and, uh, and, and, and it's beautiful, it's, it's very powerful. Machines and humans together for a better world. You know, most people kind of have a misconstrued understanding of singularity and the concept of singularity. Uh, for those, those who are not so involved in the industry and that may have this uh, kind of uh, skewed narrative, what would you say to them? So singularity is, is a journey. Uh, first is a concept and a mission. So singularity from a technical perspective is really machines becoming self-conscious. And so what we have today is our very powerful models. They are able to analyze on an experience basis so on already existing data uh, and give you very fast and uh, seemingly smart answers, but sometimes they're not that smart. What's that extra piece that is missing is context and reasoning. So which is what Ben has been working on uh, with Hyperon and OpenCog uh, AGI research. And so what we're really looking for is to build a global brain, uh, a global brain of, uh, of uh, multiple AIs that become one AI. And so it's the journey from fragmentation into the singularity. Um, obviously, that, that's where the unsettling feeling may come. Who is doing this? Who's... Fragmentation is good because fragmentation is decentralized. But if fragmentation is only a few companies uh, with infinite amount of money, then you don't really know what's going on. So what we want to do here and why people should, should, can feel more comfortable uh, interacting with AIs, with the right ones, is that this is something that is not stoppable. You, and uh, as much as you will have super dominant centralized companies, there are also independents like us that carry a strong message, join us, help us build it, and it can be benevolent, it can have, it can have positive effects on the world. It's a very powerful tool uh, that can shape the future of humanity, and uh, it's better to do it together. Well, tell me a little bit more about you know, the, the benefits of a global hive mind and the pitfalls that we should try to avoid. 
Well, that's a very interesting question. I mean, you can start from looking at global social systems around the world. Is it efficient? Sure, I mean, society is work. We can build amazing things. Uh, but there are also a lot of uh, inequalities, inefficiencies. Um, so here, we're still at the very ground level. Sure, we can build a technological solution, but we also need a sort of constitutional, some rules, rules of engagement to make sure that, almost like founding fathers, we move towards the right path. Um, who, who is, right now there's no real framework, it's global, it's borderless like crypto and, uh, and again very, very, very centralized. So it would be great to have uh, um, a group of uh, independents or experts coming together and looking at what the opportunities and the challenges are and making sure that we're going towards a, a better world of uh, contribution, collaboration, uh, rather than a super centralized world of mass control uh, and, uh, and centralization. Mario, could you tell me about, you know, what are the human things that you like to do and maybe <laughs> some of your hobbies and a little bit about sure. your life? Well, sure. That, well, so I think being here is already a manifestation of a little bit of who I am. I really, I really like collaboration and working with people uh, that are like-minded but also diverse. Uh, but really, use having having collaboration and good feelings at the base. We work a lot. We work constantly, even when we sleep. It's always in our head. Uh, so we need to have fun doing it. Um, I like traveling. I like exploring new cultures. Like. Uh, um, I like history, philosophy, sciences, so uh, again, being here, learning just by doing what we do is already, it's already a passion. Uh, I'm a sportsman, I used to be a sportsman, I still, I still do that, uh, not as much as I used to in the past, but I try to keep, uh, to keep active. And uh, yeah, I mean, recently it's mostly about work, traveling and, uh, and good people. The future is coming, let's do it together.